chapter 30. Let's turn there. Deuteronomy chapter 30. We've been just looking at a variety of things on Wednesday night that uh, should encourage our hearts as, as Christians. And uh, you'll see as I read what, what it is tonight. Deuteronomy 30, starting in verse 11. I'm just going to read a few verses here. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou should say, Who shall bring up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. Now, I'm going to stop reading there. We'll, we will read the rest of the chapter in, in a little bit here. But I think it's encouraging to know that God speaks plainly. God speaks plainly. You know, the world tries to make it like a game where we have to figure out what God is trying to say and all this voodoo and crazy stuff. Um, you know, we don't have to have a trip to heaven to know what God's saying. We don't have to have a vision. I remember uh, every once in a while I'll say, you know, Jesus doesn't have to stand at the end of your bed for you to know what he wants. And we had a guy who believed that Jesus had stood at the end of his bed. Uh, I don't know who it was, but it was Jesus. Um, we don't have to have some extra special presentation. God has given us his word. If you look down at chapter 29, verse 29, he puts it real clear, clearly here. He says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. There's some things we don't know. Well, you don't worry about it. That belongs to God. <laughs> what he wants you to know, he has revealed. He's told us. And you know what a blessing it is. Now, we don't have to be looking for hidden meanings. That's how cults start. Some guy gets some hidden meaning or something that nobody else has. Or it's how Christians get sidetracked. I've even seen Christians take a normal Christian thing and they emphasize it so much that their life gets, gets distorted. It's like if your right arm was as big as your left leg or something. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's a normal thing, but it's out of, out of proportion. God wants us just to find the real obvious meanings. Of things and he says that you, you know these verses John 20 uh, verse 31 when he says but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing you might have life through his name you know, God wrote it down so we could know uh, I'm going to show you a scripture in just a little bit that uh, is, is exactly that first um, John 5 13 again you, you would know this verse uh, these things Let's see, let me get it exactly right. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's 1 John 5, 13. Um, so he says to us there, it's not hidden, it's not far off. In other words, it's not beyond us. God speaks clearly to us. In verse 13 of Deuteronomy 30 there, I found it interesting. He says, it's not beyond the sea. Oh, who can we send to go? Oh, it must be in America. No, maybe it's in uh, Thailand. You know, <laughs> who knows? Um, we, we, don't have, we don't have to go somewhere else. We don't need a foreign experience. Uh, some people think they've got to go to Israel to know about Christianity. No. Uh, some people, if they're into other religions, oh, we've got to go to Tibet or we've got to go and have these religious pilgrimages and, and so on. I think it's interesting to notice that most of the societies that the world looks to for spiritual wisdom, so-called, are failed societies. You ever notice that? People get all caught up with uh, Egyptology. Oh, we've got to find out the secret of the pyramids. Let me tell you something. The secret of the pyramids is they failed. <laughs> That's a failed society. Uh, others get into these... Um, native religions or native people america you know aborigines here and so on and, oh we need to find out you know they're close to the earth and 
Uh, listen, they're failed societies. That's not where we need to get our wisdom. We need to get it from God. God says it's, it's plain and clear. In verse 14, he says, the word is very not unto thee. <laughs> we play with our grandkids, you know, hot and cold. They're looking for something. And it's so funny because they, they can't seem to figure out. <laughs> You're really hot. And off they go somewhere else. You know? now, God says, it's very nigh to thee. You're hot. It's in your mouth. <laughs> and in your heart, in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. Um, it's right here. It, it's right here for us. God has given us his word. And he's not only given it to us, he's preserved it. Some people have so many, they throw them on the road. <laughs> um, look, look at where, this is where I wanted to mention to you. Romans chapter 10, he uses those same verses there. Romans chapter 10 and verse 5. And I think it's interesting to see what he's talking about when he brings out those verses again. I mean, you, you know what it is. Romans 10, I'll start in verse 5. But Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. And then here's the verses that we give people, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And God says, we don't have to search out what, oh, how can I be saved? How can I know? God says, here it is. It's, it. it's plain and simple. And uh, we need to understand God speaks plainly. Now, this is very simple and, and Hopefully, brief message tonight. Uh, since God speaks plainly, what are we to do? <laughs> uh, you've probably had times when you've misunderstood someone. Uh, I've, I'm sure I've told you this before, that the day we arrived in Australia, uh, there was at the airport and crowds, and this guy held out his hand. And I thought he, you know, he said something. These Aussies, you can't understand them, you know. Arr, arr, arr. And I thought he, well, he probably said, welcome to Australia. So I put out my hand and he jumped back and he said, give me your ticket. <laughs> he said it very plainly then. <laughs> uh, I'd misunderstood him. But when he spoke plainly, what should I do? Give him my ticket. <laughs> when God speaks plainly, yeah, sure. Sometimes we're going to misunderstand. We're not listening or whatever. But one thing we need to do not to not do is don't explain away what he says. You know, a lot of people do that. They take God's word and, oh, I know it says that, but, and they try and explain it away. In Deuteronomy 29, um, look at first at verse 18. He says, Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. He says, verse 19, And it came, and it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart to add drunkenness to thirst. Now, what he's been talking about in chapter 28 and 29 was if you live a certain way, if you, well, let me, let me read it to you. Chapter 28, verse 1. It shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 2, all these blessings shall come on thee. If you'll listen to God, God will bless you. And then later on, verse 14 and, uh, or 15 and 16, I think it is, uh, he says, I wrote it down here, 15, it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. At the end of the verse, these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And so here's somebody explaining that away. They're saying, well, it'll be all right. I'll bless, I'll just bless myself. You know, now, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart to add drunkenness to thirst. And, you know, there's a lot of people that do that. You ask them, going to heaven? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be, God will he'll welcome me. You know, he'll, I'll be, what a blessing I'll be to heaven. You know, that's most people's attitude, even though they treat God like he doesn't exist. 
and many believe he doesn't. But don't explain away what God says. And you know, as Christians, we especially need to be careful of that. God speaks plainly. Secondly, listen. You know, when God speaks, listen. Second uh, Timothy four four describes uh, people who don't. It says they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. A lot of people like that. Uh, I was watching the news tonight, and oh, they're so upset that they're putting a an ad on the opera house. I thought, you know, they'll kill babies. They'll tattoo their arms up and down and put pins in their ears. And, you know, they do all these awful things. But don't put lights on the opera house. You know, uh, they, they're turned to fables. They're just living in a, in a fairy tale world. And we need to be careful as Christians that, that we're not looking for things that we can't understand, but that we'll just read and believe the things that we do understand. Uh, in the book of James, he says, that every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. He says that we should receive with meekness the engrafted word. In James 1.25, he says, Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So we don't want to explain it away. We want to listen to it. And then we want to do what God says. This is really... Really plain, simple stuff, isn't it? Go back to Deuteronomy 30 there. Let me read the rest of the chapter. Deuteronomy 30 and uh, verse 15. He says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But... If thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Here, these are really strong words. I can imagine Moses really, really calling out here. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. We need to do what God says. We need to hear. He, he says we're called to make choices. And I know we, we ultimately make a choice. Am I going to trust the Lord or not? But every day we make choices. Uh, I think I mentioned to you the, the fellowship meeting I went to, the theme was rejoice in the Lord. Well, really, every time you make a decision to obey the Lord, to follow the Lord, you're rejoicing in the Lord. You know, a, a choice means that there's, one of, there's more than one thing you can do. And, and as Christians, we're constantly faced with choices. And what Moses, what God is saying to us here, he, he says, I, I put before you a choice. Choose life. <laughs> and every time we make a choice, that's what we're doing. Choose blessing. Choose obedience. It's not hard. He said, I put it right there. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. Cromwell was asked how he could be so brave. And he had to make a lot of decisions that were, went against the, the norm. He said, I've learned that when you fear God, you have no man to fear. <laughs> that was his attitude. Uh, uh, one more verse before, before I quit here. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8 and, and verse 12. And this is just, I don't know, kind of uh, circling back a little bit. But Isaiah 8 verse 12 says, Say ye not a confederacy to all them whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread, and, ye shall, and he shall be for a sanctuary. I'll just stop reading there. Uh, you, you know, we don't have to look for um, secret plots and plans that people are supposedly making. Uh, well, conspiracies and, you know, you know, all of those things. Uh, confederacy. 
Uh, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Let him be your fear. That's what Moses was, was saying there in, in Deuteronomy. God speaks very plainly. Uh, since he speaks plainly, we should listen, not try and explain it away, and obey him. And since God speaks plainly, let me give you two encouraging conclusions I came to. One is we can know the truth. <laughs> you know, we, we don't have to say, oh, I can't know. No, we can know. God has said, here's the truth. And secondly, we can choose what is right. Did you notice as we read there in, in, uh, in Deuteronomy, uh, he, he several time, times used that, that idea that we may do all the words of this law, he said in uh, 29, verse 29, uh, and, and in other places. You know, because we know, now we can do it. And uh, what a blessing that is. Uh, we don't need natural wisdom. We need supernatural wisdom. And what God has revealed to us, we can know. He even says he'll give us his Holy Spirit to help us. And uh, so what a blessing it is to know. God speaks plainly. We don't have to worry, oh, maybe I won't know what, you know, what I'm supposed to do. God speaks very plainly. And uh, we, can, we can trust him to, to help us to be able to do it. I thought we'd sing the, those other two songs before we... Uh, I might get... Uh, Ray to give a, a brief testimony as well. We've got plenty of time here, so...